It's nice to be here. So my name is Mika Ihonen. Uh, I am a product manager at Kindhelm. Uh, we are based in Finland. And uh, now I'm going to tell you how to provide continuous high precision positioning, attitude and heading for agricultural robotics in spite of uh, GNSS outages. But uh, before going uh, too deeply into the details, I would like to take one step backwards and uh, take a brief look on what does mean uh, autonomous driving or what's, what's required for making autonomous vehicle. Uh, there is uh, lots of different uh, perspective to take a look on this. And, uh, but uh, this is from my perspective, how I, how I see the situation. And of course, this is a really big uh, challenge for anyone to start from uh, scratch and making autonomous robot or, or even uh, semi-autonomous. But from my perspective, uh, I see two main topics. The first is the positioning, and the uh, second is the navigation. And how to differentiate these two things is uh, answering two simple questions, or uh, how would I say, the positioning is, is trying to tell you where I am. And if you have very good quality positioning system, then it can also tell you uh, where I'm going into. And uh, this means that uh, it can tell you the direction and also the speed of the motion. On the other hand, uh, the navigation system, it's answering the questions, uh, am I satisfied where I am? And uh, what am I gonna do about it? Typically, it includes the navigation algorithms, uh, control systems, uh, different, different approaches to, to solve this. But in, in agriculture, the most typical use case is that, that there is some route plan that you're supposed to follow, go, go end of the road, row and make the turn back and, and continue, continue uh, and process the entire field. In Kindhelm, uh, I, I can tell you already now that uh, we are focusing in, in the positioning and uh, allowing you to implement your the control system and, and the navigation algorithms suitable for your, your vehicle. But then becomes the, not maybe the biggest nightmare, but one of the drawbacks for any, any uh, autonomous robot designers. Uh, it's the GNSS outage. And uh, please don't take me wrong, I really, really personally love GNSS. Uh, I think it's one of the greatest uh, inventions of our time. And I barely can go, go from home to work without the Google Maps. But uh, yeah, and if, if I try to navigate somewhere else and I don't get the signal with my cell phone, then I'm totally lost. So that's why I'm also motivated to developing these uh, positioning models. So uh, GNSS outage, uh, it can happen almost everywhere at any time. Uh, most typically when there is uh, tree lines, high buildings or some other canopies blocking the signals from satellites. And if your navigation system uh, is based on uh, satellite positioning only, it's, it's really similar to the situation that uh, you're walking and suddenly you lose your eyesight. Then you can think for, for a moment, you can remember where you are, like I am here in the center of the stage. But then if you try to move, you can take a step you still are quite sure where you are. You can take a second step. You still might be quite confident where you are, but after three or four or five steps, you're starting to be scared. Is it safe to continue walking like this? And, and this is the same situation for your robotics. If you lose your global positioning, you have no other um, technologies or methods to determine your position, then, then the only solution is stop the vehicle, stop the robot right there. You cannot go on anymore. And uh, what then is required, some manual operations, you need to manually drive your tractor 
or a robot in, into a better place, and then you can continue the operations until the next uh, uh, Genesis outage. Then, uh, regarding the initial question, how to provide high precision position, attitude, and heading for agricultural robotics in spite of GNSS outages, which is, by the way, awfully long question. But uh, fortunately, the answer is short. Uh, use IPESA. IPESA is our uh, positioning model. It's a uh, fully integrated uh, inertial navigation system with the GNSS receiver. So we have developed our own uh, sensor fusion algorithm. And that means that uh, when you lose the satellite signal, when you lose the satellite positioning, uh, we can still continue providing you the high accurate positioning, heading and attitude data for uh, long enough until your vehicle robot gets back in a good position and, and uh, gets, uh, has the reacquisition of the satellite signal. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we are not providing only the positioning, attitude, and heading data. We also provide you the reliability grading, so how reliable is the position at this moment of the time. Because uh, when you're uh, positioning based on the inertial sensors, uh, it's, uh, the error will actually accumulate over the time. And it's only the matter of uh, how good are your sensor and how good is your sensor fusion, the further you can go without losing the accuracy. But after some, after some time, eventually, uh, you are out of the range and you have to make the decision that now it's not uh, safe to continue anymore. But uh, with our sensors, uh, which are good, and also our sensor fusion, you can proceed long and all the time we are able to provide you this reliability grading so you are able to make the decision when is the right moment to stop, when it's not safe to proceed anymore. And in results, we, we, are, we allow uninterrupted operations for you, uh, also in the most, most challenging environments where there is canopies, uh, tree lines, uh, high buildings blocking your satellite signals. In addition, uh, the EPESA, our product, it's uh, not only fully integrated ENS, GNSS receiver, it also includes uh, built-in global 4G internet module. So it's a standalone solution. Uh, you can uh, connect it directly to the RTK correction services and get the high precision positioning without using any external additional uh, communication module. Of course, if you have an internet connection already, another system providing this correction data, you can also use, use uh, our interfaces to provide it from your, your solution. Furthermore, we have uh, developed easy, easy to use uh, protocol converter interface which means that if you already have a navigation system, you don't want to modify it or it's uh, complicated, you can uh, use our module. And with easy syntax, you can implement your own protocol into our system. And, and it, it will make your integration and deployment of the positioning system much, much easier. Naturally, we, we provide also the standard communication interfaces and protocols such as NMEA. 0183 and NMA 2000. Okay, that's from me. And if you have any questions now, I'm, I'm pleased to answer. Thank you, Mika. Questions for Mika. Are there any questions? 
And then we have three more presentations. Yes, gentlemen in the middle of the room. Three more presentations to go. Bonjour, je n'ai pas très bien compris euh, votre module là, il, est, il sert de base euh, pour RTK ou euh, il capte tous les signaux et il envoie par la 4G euh, du protocole NMA Je n'ai pas très bien compris si c'est une base ou si c'est un, un peu récepteur euh, GNSS is it only euh, qui n'est pas, or... qui est pas euh, très pré précis, et, mais je ne comprends pas comment vous arrivez à faire du RTK. Voilà. Okay, apparently it's not so clear if it's uh, only a base or how does it work. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh. Vous comprenez pas comment comment ça fonctionne, c'est ça Si c'est juste une base ou is it only a RTK ouais, base? Si c'est une base RTK euh, qui va ramoyer des protocoles euh, par euh, des, par radio, par euh, 4G. Ou alors euh, si euh, c'est un simple récepteur GNSS. One, one moment. Je suis pas une spécialiste de la question. Hein. Oui. So, sorry, my French is uh, not, not very good. Est-ce qu'on peut retraduire oui. pour vite Comment moi l'anglais <rire> Oui, je disais, oui, le, votre récepteur là, okay. il sert de, de base pour une. Ça marche pas. Ok, one more time, thank you. Ça va marcher là C'est bon <rire> En finlandais, ça va être encore plus compliqué. <rire> ça marche Oui Peut-être Il écoute la question. Ah, bon, alors c'est parfait. Oui, euh, je disais votre module que vous avez présenté, je n'ai pas très bien compris si euh, euh, il, leur, il recevait des signaux GNSS normaux euh, sans positionnement RTK. Et ben, ce que je n'ai pas compris, c'est pourquoi, comment vous arrivez à, avec mo votre module à passer un RTK sans une base C'est un peu compliqué. Ouais. Parce qu'il faut dans un RTK, il faut une base qui envoie après les modules vers le rover, qui envoie les informations N, N, les trames NMEA, un euh, RTCM3 vers le rover. Et là, je n'ai pas compris si vous le faisiez, comment votre module il devient euh, une base. Alors que, a priori, il semblerait que c'est un simple récepteur GPS euh, qui ne perd pas les informations, d'accord Mais euh, voilà. comment vous arrivez Vous avez dit que ça basculait en base RTK. Je n'ai pas compris comment. Parce que ce n'est pas possible. On ne peut pas être récepteur et en même temps être une base. Okay. Il, va, il va vous répondre. Um, okay. Uh, now, now. You have the question? Now I think I get okay. it. So yes, uh, our solution it's uh, uh, called uh, GNSS Rover. So uh, to achieve the RTK accuracy, of course, you need uh, either a local base station, or you need to subscribe uh, to a, a correction service provider. And. Uh, Yeah, so we still need to use the, our, some kind of base station or correction services to achieve the high accuracy. Uh, but the, the point here is that w if you lose the satellite signals or you even might lose the correction services for a moment, moment then we still can continue providing the accurate positioning For, uh, for long enough that you typically have the reacquisition of the signals from the satellites or from the correction services. Did this answer your question? Okay. Apparently, yes. It does. Great. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Another question, maybe? We have a minute. Uh, yes, there are actually two. Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you provide some information about the error uh, mm -hmm. and the confidence of the measurement. Is this purely uh, determined by the time that's passed through uh, since the start of the measurement, or is there any other factors as well? Um, can you a little bit specify? Uh, I'm not sure if I... So when, you, when, when there is an, a GNSS outage mm -hmm. and the measurement is done on the platform through the inertial sensors, mm -hmm. The information that you provide about the confidence of the measurement, how is that determined? Yeah, it's it's uh, determined uh, by the um, um, how would I say this briefly? Um, there is a certain uh, uh, 
noise factors and, and bias with the sensors. So we uh, estimate like the worst case, how, how the, uh, the borders, how, the, how the, uh, the limits were within the positioning is. And, and so it's, it's based, on, based on the uh, specification from the sensors. What, what are the noise densities? Okay. And we have time for one last okay. short question up there. Thanks. Make it short if possible. Okay, in order to maintain the signal, like the accuracy of your signal, you use IMU, I suppose. Uh, did you consider any other uh, sensors to do that, such as 3D cameras or uh, anything like that? And uh, if you did, what, why did you choose IMU? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, we, uh, we have been considering other sensors since, since the beginning and we are still considering. Uh, but this far, uh, uh, we still believe that uh, with this high precision IMU, uh, we can achieve uh, better performance and, and with the lower price. And, uh, but what we, are, we are studying also other options uh, and, and maybe, maybe in the future we can also provide you more information, uh, at least the evaluation results, how, how, they, get, how they can be used. But uh, at least for, for uh, 3D autometry, uh, visual autometry, uh, I don't think the resolution is uh, good enough for, for this kind of purpose.